in to Maybe I Love You, Maybe. Um, my name is Sean. <laughs> I'm Dara. And uh, today we are uh, going to continue talking about uh, love languages. Um, if you're not familiar with what love languages are, um, <clears throat> there is five primary love languages people have. Uh, it's gifts, uh, it is acts of service, it is physical touch, uh, words of affirmation, and time. time. Um, and those are ways people uh, receive and give their love to other people. It makes them feel uh, uh, like they are loved. loved. Um, oh, guess wow. the, hence the name, love language. Um, consider it like uh, if uh, she spoke French and I spoke German, uh, the two of us would have a hard time communicating. Mm -hmm. um, so I would have to learn how to speak French and she would have to learn how to speak German so the two of us can communicate. Mm -hmm. um, so today uh, we are going to be talking about one of the love languages, touch. which is touch, physical touch. Um, so uh, both of us and most people Physical touch is uh, a primary love language, or at least way up on the top of the list. Mine, it's probably one of my biggest. I'd say I'd probably say it's second. Your second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably number one for me would be words of affirmation. Words and, of affirmation and is then mine too. Three would probably be acts of service for me. Yeah. Um, hers uh, probably gifts. Yeah. Probably number uh, one is gifts. No, no, no. Aff words of affirmation for sure. Every sure. test I've ever taken says words of affirmation. Yeah, you lie. Is, gifts, you is, lie. gifts is up there. But um, touch actually, and we'll talk about this as we go on a little bit more. Touch for me kind of developed. Um, it wasn't, but then as I got older, it became more important. Right. Um, mainly, I think a lot of that was the way I was raised with PDA and understanding what touch is and how it's important in a relationship. Um, so it wasn't for me originally, but it's become much more important. So we'll discuss it. But for yes. you, it was always. 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 Uh, so know, you're the <clears throat> expert on touch I, more so than me. You know, I think it's very important for relationships, uh, mm -hmm. for people in a, in a relationship, um, to discuss what their love languages are. So take the test. Uh, we have a link below. Mm -hmm. um, but make sure you take a test and understand what your love language is. Make sure you understand what your partner's love language is um, so that the two of you guys can communicate correctly. And I'm not speaking German. She's not speaking French. Uh, um, Italian. But Italian. We'll go. Okay, here, wait. I got something for you. Are you ready? No. Okay. okay, now I'm ready. He has no idea where this is going. What Beatles song best deals with touch? Hmm. Mm. We're huge Beatles fans. I know. Uh, there's so many songs that they sing. Let's see. Um, a touch one. Um, You're also really bad with song touches. I'm terrible. Why, why don't you just tell me what it should be? I would like one uh, I thought of is I want to hold your hand. Oh, okay. That's okay. No, you win. That, yeah. That's probably the best one. Um, Thanks. Okay. As far as when it comes to um, discussing these things, make sure you check in, know what your partners are. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's kind of rewind back to maybe why, maybe, <laughs> why uh, the love language you have is the way you have. Uh, we've discussed in some of the research we've seen is- Childhood. It, it, it's childhood. It's, it's, childhood. it's how you were shown love in the early stages. Mm -hmm. um, take it for instance, you see those videos of those dogs. Uh, we've all seen them at the pound. And, uh, you know, they, they don't get along with any of the dogs. When someone mm -hmm. goes to adopt them, they're just mean or they're mm -hmm. barking or they, you know, they're, they're, they're angry or mm -hmm. hiding in the corner. Mm -hmm. And then you watch them as they progress and they start getting around the other dogs, uh, you know, when they get taken home. And then next thing you know, there's this lovable beagle that <laughs> at the beginning of the, the you know, clip, mm -hmm. the, it, it's the worst dog. And they, everybody thinks that it probably should be euthanized. Next thing you know, it's just the most loving dog. Right. Well, it's probably because of negative yep, physical abuse. touch. Yeah, yes. absolutely. <clears throat> so when it comes to you raising your children or as you're getting raised, mm -hmm. you know, uh, touch is such a vital piece of showing love mm -hmm. that, you know, the children that are abused with the physical touch, okay, negatively, um, those, those are, those are things they're going to have to deal with for the rest of their life. And someone that was abused, um, probably is not a primary love language of, well, I think this touch. once again goes back to childhood. Is it a source of joy or pain for you? Correct. Or maybe neutral. I mean, for me, it's neutral. You can maybe talk about how it's joyful for you. It's, it was neutral for me. Um, but I find interesting of all the five love languages, this is the only one that deals with our five senses okay. and being a uh, sensory, um, you know, the well, I'm gonna touch, smell, taste. Yeah, this this is one of those, and all the other love languages don't deal with sensory as much. Right. Uh, so you know, uh, maybe words of affirmation touches on hearing. But hearing. I that, thought of that, but um, but I think for me with affirmation, words of affirmation, because I did think of that. It's more how they affect me. It's an emotional response than right. it is just hearing it. You can hear something, well, and it, it doesn't. 
feel love like language a, of, uh, a word words of, of affirmation. affirmation. It could be done in sign language, so you never physically, you never hear, hear it. it. Yeah. So, okay. You so, win. yeah, I think the touch is like the only one. So, um, if you are big into sensory, that's weird, right? Yeah. But, I mean, then touch could be up there for you. Now, what about brain touching? Like, uh, oh, no. like what if I were to say something and it touches your brain? Does that count as a um, physical touch? No. Okay. Because it has the word physical touch. So, okay. I think we have to explore that aspect. So if you're ever in brain surgery and I touch your head, then I would be proven right? Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, so, okay, so it's important for physical touch in the early stages of children. Mm -hmm. um, research has found that um, children that have physical touch, kisses and hugs and, and shown with the physical touch, actually are way more emotionally stable than children mm -hmm. who were not. Makes sense. So, um, you know, it's important with your kids, even if it's not one of your love language, to de demonstrate to that to them mm -hmm. so that as they grow up, they they can they can hold themselves emotionally. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, as far as, is there any Bible verses that kind of talk about physical touch? Yeah, so one of my favorite stories. Was where the spear went into Jesus? That's, <laughs> no, no, that's not. That's no. negative physical touch. Oh my gosh. That's fulfilling <laughs> the prophecy. We, we're not going to have a Bible lesson. But um, Jesus, when he, um, there was always a level of touching someone when he healed them. Okay. So I think it's interesting if touch is a pain point for you, how touch could become a healing if done in the right way with the right person. Mm -hmm. um, because Jesus always, like whether he was uh, helping a leper to um, have their skin restored or blind eyes opened. Um, but one of my favorites is in Luke 8, and it's when someone touched him in the crowd and he asks the disciples, who touched me? And they're basically Peter, everyone's saying, Jesus, like you're surrounded by a mob of people, like everyone's bumping and touching you. And he's like, no, he knew specifically someone had touched the hem of his garment. It was the woman with the issue of blood. And so I think we see Jesus has an intentionality with touch and knowing that um, the, the difference between just brushing up against somebody and the, the intentionality of touching somebody mm -hmm. with the idea of healing in mind. So touch oh, could be... A form of healing for some um, so my question I guess to you is is touch sexual is it only sexual or is there an element of that I think you have to understand physical touch yes there's an element of sexual mm -hmm. um, but really uh, it's not primarily sex let's let's be very clear it it's it, there's people who you know th there's women and you hear the joke all the time it's it, it's oh it's his birthday I gotta have sex with him, True. you know. Um, and if his love language is touch, yeah. and that's that's the only time she she does that mm -hmm. and any kind of touch, uh, his probably his love language is probably you know the, the it's empty his mm -hmm. tank. Um, so yes, there's there's an element of sexual, but I think I think most importantly, and because that is one of my primary languages, mm -hmm. is it, it it doesn't have to be. That, you know, any kind of sexual way, like even, you know, holding my hand mm -hmm. makes me feel loved. Um, you know, uh, give me a hug. You mm -hmm. know, it, I, you know, I, I think that it, when it comes to people, um, I think you have to understand there's kind of two pieces to uh, the, that physical touch love language. Mm -hmm. And one is the sexual part. But I would say if I never had sex ever, mm -hmm. uh, but I still got hugged and kissed and told that I was, you know, uh, I would still feel love. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it could could you not have sex ever in a relationship and have still your tank full of physical? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but on the flip side is that's another piece of it. So I think you know there there's sexual parts of the body, um, and then there's non-sexual parts. Uh, so, you know, just grabbing my hand or rubbing my wrist or putting your arm around me, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would consider all those non-sexual. Uh, so, kissing my neck. Yeah. Probably would be. <laughs> so, if you grew up where, from like a very Christian background, like I did, and PDA was something you struggled with, what do you do if you have a partner who needs affection, maybe also in public, and that's something that you grew up uncomfortable with or feeling like it was wrong or maybe even in some ways depending on the level of intimacy um a sin yeah um you know i, I think I, I think there's a, a misconception about uh physical touch in regards to pda you know getting out and, and doing that you know the, the gross pda stuff that everybody sees you know where the, the couple are all just mugging down and being all you know like, oh, what are those? um you know it, it's it's 
PDA, I think there's still some stuff you can do in the PDA world where, mm -hmm. there, where someone who doesn't mind the public display of affection mm -hmm. is, um, you know, still doing small things. You know, I've seen couples where, you know, when they run into each other and they see each other and they do the side and it's just something as simple as rubbing down the arm, mm -hmm. you know, that, that is PDA. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not something I would ever do with my buddies. Hey, it's good to see you, dude. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think I'd hang out with them very often, <laughs> um, but that would be PDA. I, and you are terrible at PDA, you know, because of maybe your background, but yeah. you know, I'll, I'll go in for a kiss <laughs> and I, I get the, like, sometimes the most half kiss ever, because like, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what? And I, I know, and, and I'm I like, stop I you. Adore and I'm, you. It's and it is. It's coming yeah. from a weird place yeah. from my childhood. It upsets me. Yeah. I know, and I hate that. Yeah. Like holding I'll hands. I'll stop her. I'll be like, no, no, no. Come back here and give me a kiss. And then she's like, no, oh, okay. <laughs> like, and then she does this weird thing sometimes. She's just like, it's like this fish kiss, like. You know, I, I know, and I'm like, I know. I'm like, what? What, this what is, was that? That is not what I want right now. You're no, not filling my love tank. I know, and like holding hands and different things, like. I desire that touch too, but I think it like some of it can be the way in which you were raised of like conducting yourself in a certain way in public, okay. which is which is weird. And I don't know if anyone else out there like grew up like this, but I guess for me, it's I've kind of had to like cross over that in my like mentally in my mind of like what's appropriate, what what is between us and is okay, and what for me is uncomfortable. So are um, you uncomfortable with the PDA? So like when I when I want my PDA, when I want to get I want when I, when my I want to get down with the PDA, um, <laughs> is that something that you're uh, you're uneasy about? I think it depends to which level and where I am. Right. You know what I mean? Which is like a movie theater, like cuddling or holding hands, like totally fine. But I don't know. Like I think, and I think I've had to like really get better at it and realize like that is something that. I, first of all, I desire it with you, right. but second of all, too, like knowing if I'm weird about it, it's probably coming from a place that I didn't sort out in my brain from my past. So pinching your butt at church, would that make you <laughs> unhappy? You know, it's it's so funny because I was going to go there and then I was like, no, like, duh. Like, within my mind, it's a duh. <laughs> but, but you for know you, I would like, do it just to make far, you uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, um, but okay, so, he, so to that, though, I had to organize this in my head and you know there's... Okay, so one thing is like, for me, I grew up with a bit of a learning disability in the sense that, like, I had to memorize things in kind of weird ways with, like, acronyms or, like, songs or, like, dances. Like, really weird riddles and stuff. But I was a really good student. Oh, but it was, Did like, Did you all... have to learn, like, an interpretive dance yeah, for, like, like, a math class? Like, like, I... like one plus two You is don't even want to know. You don't even want to know. It's so weird. But it seems to work. So I still do this to, when I'm trying to process, like, information. So for me, with touch, I've come up with four C's. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm so The four so, C's of so touching. Sorry. This is where we lose everybody listening. <laughs> so the first one for me with touch is the idea of comfort with touch. Okay. And so this is like a security thing where like I want to touch your toe like at night. Okay. It's like comforting. Okay. And it doesn't I always think have it's a to... dog doing it. And I'm like, get off the bed. <laughs> it doesn't have to be around other people, but it's a form of comfort that I do enjoy with touch okay. because it makes me feel safe. Okay. I don't know if anyone else can relate Watch to out. this. I need to give you a warning when I have athlete's feet. So, you know. Mm. Yeah, that would be helpful. <laughs> you won't get a pedicure, so we don't know how to fix this, do we? Okay, which guys totally should get pedicures. It's relaxing, but... No, physical touch. I love physical touch. Don't touch my toes. <laughs> don't touch I got, I got one massage in my life, and, and she was massaging my thumbs. Yeah. I was like, I get done. I was like, how was your massage? <laughs> I'm like, it was like, good. But why was she focusing just, on my thumbs? And your earlobes, you're like, was I sexually harassed? <laughs> yeah, well, what was this? I was never had something She's like, how does that feel? Earlobes. And I'm like, um, yeah. weird? <laughs> We've not diverted this to okay. touch gone wrong with Touch love, gone with wrong, yes. Um, uh, okay, so, so C. So, so comfort, the comfort. Okay. Now switching gears. Oh, okay. another C. Yes, but more spicy. Okay. Is um is chemistry. Okay. For me, uh, also a pain point. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was married before Sean, and this was a very weak area in our relationship was with chemistry. But with you, 
Mm -hmm. Too much information. It's very easy, and there's a lot of desire. They call me a chemist. <laughs> yeah, that, that so, way. so I think there is that is a part for me. That is a part of the love language of touch is okay. the chemistry where it is more romantic and there is more desire. Because, like you said, you don't want somebody touching your toes at a pedicure, but you do desire touch. Yeah. But it's also weird with your buddies. So I do think this happens to be more of a partnership Again, thing. I don't so massage my buddy's weird. feet or like in often. the workplace, like that's So there's there's Gary Chapman does the five love love languages for the workplace, and I, and they take out touch. Oh, do they? Yeah. It's not even there. It's like yeah, the new and then touch. Do not touch. Don't. You will. You will make this weird, and you will end up just, in HR. I walk around with a ruler. I just want you to know that would have been a hug, and I just <laughs> tap him with it. Yeah, I mean, even for people who love hugging people, like they're touchy feely people, right. like, and then during COVID, like you couldn't touch anyone, and like you could hear stories of people being like so depressed and sad. Yeah. I'm not that like touchy feely weird, but no. but with you, I do desire that chemistry. Yeah. And it is funny with my buddies. I, I do give my buddies. Yeah, hugs, you are. You, know? you are more of a, um, of a touchy. Feely. I tell my buddies I love them because I do. Yeah. So you know, I'm not afraid of showing my love, the manly love. Very you know? manly. I I I, I don't. Have have an interpretive dance for my love for my buddies uh but uh well we can't all be that cool not all that cool okay so comfort chemistry care and you might be thinking comfort and care seem similar but to me care is like if i'm doing the dishes and you come up and like give me a back massage it's like in that moment there's like a level of care okay. different than comfort comfort for me is more like the security of your touch but care is more like it's it's something that I don't want everybody doing, but I, I want do you doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like that that caring yeah. or like a mother's touch. They yeah, say. like being with the kids. Care. That's, yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's a healthy comfort, you know, boundary. Like sometimes when you know Luke, you know, or the kids, yeah, cut it, they'll cut and you just feel their leg go over the top. Yeah, you know? and you're like. Oh, that they, they, you know, they snuggle into yeah. you. That's the comfort. But then the when care. I see them, when we're watching a movie, I just grab my little dude and pull him in and yeah. give him a hug. That, okay, I can see the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two. Okay, and then the last one is a connection point. Okay. Like, different than chemistry. It's not like, oh, I'm desiring you, you know, dim the lights. But it's more this connection of, okay, so my example is every time you leave the house, we always do this weird thing where we have to say goodbye multiple times and yeah. hug each other. Yeah. And if I get like chintzed out of one of the hugs, I she get kind of. <laughs> she... <laughs> and it's my fault. I started. You started it. this. Like, I come I'm in, like, I, what are I you in a rush? I'm leaving like, and I give her a kiss and hug, one. and then I walk away, and then I usually, you know, finish up grabbing it's my stuff, cute. and I come back in there and go, okay. And she goes, I thought you were leaving without my second one, and I'm just like. <laughs> Wow, did, did this just backfire on me? me? So, no, it's, it's a So weird. But, like, it's the connection of knowing, like, even though our days will get busy and we're doing different things, it's like we had that that moment. Right. You know, it's not meant to go anywhere else. It's just kind of like, hey, I didn't forget. You're in, I'm giving you your third hug. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. Mm -hmm. You know, I, okay. I like your four C's. Thank you. The four C's. That's all I got. Yeah, that's, that's it. Um, <laughs> Take it away. Okay, so as far as... Um, Physical touch, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, obviously, in the workplace, it's uh, off limits, um, unless you can figure out some way to do it. You know, uh, uh, the, what's his name? The John Legend had physical touch with that one giant glove he had. He would shake oh, in the voice? So I probably could pull that off. So, um, as far as physical touch <laughs> in um, a relationship, yeah. like the two of us, um, I, I think it's important. It's not, it, it doesn't have to be all the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, and good news about love languages is you can do some of these simultaneously. Um, so meaning that we could be, you know, when it comes to, for instance, with uh, quality time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quality time, uh, if you've watched the other videos or you know about it, it it's undivided attention. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, now while we're doing the undivided, divided attention, you know, we're, we're sitting down, we're talking about mm -hmm. the day and I'm filling the, A, the, the, communication and mm -hmm. we're getting the the time mm -hmm. um i could be holding your hand so it, it could be you know multifold into uh filling sure. all those elements of the tank in one run so gentlemen if you guys have a basketball game coming on at seven mm -hmm. and it is 6 30 and you need to make sure the love tank's full hold her hand while you tell her she's pretty and ask her about her day then you're just knocking them all out in one quick run 
I am just saying. I mean, and from a girl's perspective, that's got about a 50 50 shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, why are you looking at your watch? Oh, it's 6 59. What's <laughs> happening at 7? I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll have to wait till halftime to watch this game. Um, so, when it comes to um, physical touch, as far as people who like it, we yeah. like it. Now, let's talk about people who don't like it. Okay, so. Um, it becomes a challenge to someone who comes from the world of not liking physical touch. Um, right. Do you have any friends or any examples or people that you might uh, know that I do. despise touch? I do. And actually, okay, this is going a really weird direction, but I work with teenagers. And that's a very, um, you have to be very careful. There's a lot of training around proper touch because some students that I have there's moments where they're crying because of something that happened and they like want to hug and touch. And then there's other kids you can tell that that's something they're uncomfortable with and creating those boundaries is something we're actually like trained on. But there are students that I've had that as I've gotten to know them, they've expressed they've had abuse or something. And so touch for them is like very, if you want to love them, you don't do that because that instantly is going to make them flinch or people who um, have autism or different, you know, there's some people that touch is a, actually a way to shut off the language of love oh. for them because it's something that makes them so uncomfortable. They can't get past it. And you can tell how someone responds if they're comfortable with a side hug or something or if they're like very flinch flinchy but I think as adults um people that I know that have trouble with this one it comes from once again childhood but a place of where somebody took advantage or didn't right. have boundaries with touch and so obviously an abusive way touch is something for them that is is v even with someone they adore and love as their partner, it's some it's something that's very hard for them to have in a healthy way sometimes, right. which is really unfortunate and sometimes even takes professional help and therapy to get past because there's been so much damage done in right. that area. And I've had an example of a work where, mm -hmm. where I had a, one of my employees were uh, trying to tell me to get something done in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, they start walking away. And before they walk away, I reach out and I'm like, hey, because I needed more information to make sure that this order got put together correctly. Yeah. And my simple touch on the arm made her freak out. You know, mm. and it was like, oh, I can't believe you did it. And I, you know, luckily, you know, A, there was footage. <laughs> B, I had witnesses that saw it. But it was really I, upset me most was that something as simple as just going, hey. Offended someone. I, just put her off in the deep end. And yeah. I had to calm her down going, mm -hmm. hey, like, my apologies. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to attack you. wasn't trying. I was just right. literally trying to stop you so I can finish this conversation. And, you know, with her, I don't know what happened in her life. Right, but to cause that. But she was unmanageable for the rest of the evening. Wow. Because of just something as simple as me putting my hand like so, this to stop. So I think touch is twofold. It's creating boundaries with people that are not your spouse or the, your partner. Yeah. Um, like, what does that look, yeah, what does that look like? And then knowing there has to be a level of intimacy and touch with your partner, how do you respect those boundaries and move past them so you both can be in a healthy spot? Because yeah. touch is absolutely needed for both men and women. And right. when it's lacking, right. it causes a lot of problems. It's one of, I think, the main things needed in a good marriage. And, and I have tons of my friends, and you know, one specifically that was telling me, you know, he, he got a divorce, uh, and he had not had any physical touch from his wife in over five years. Which is like crazy yeah. to think about. And, and, and on the flip side, I've known this dude forever, and here it is, you know his 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 love language uh, is touch, and mm -hmm. he wasn't getting that from from his spouse. Yeah. And you know, so that's something you have to be cognitive of as you are in a relationship to communicate. And that kind of goes back to what we talked about: mm -hmm. is the communication up front about your love languages. And you know, I don't know my advice for her mm -hmm. other than the simple thing of saying, "Hey, you know, you might not be into touch. It might make you feel uncomfortable." But if that's something for, big for me, you have to, in some ways, figure out a way that you can, you know, uh, you can oblige what and, their desires and, okay, are. And this is going to sound so incredibly insensitive and blunt. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, but find someone that you want to touch, which sounds right. creepy. But that should be part of when you are 
dating or when you're thinking about marriage, make sure that desire is there. It goes back to that chemistry. Like, yeah. even if this is something that you have to work through because of whatever reason from your past, like, find someone where that is as natural as it can be for you. Like, thankfully, for us, it's, it's I feel it's very, very, like, natural. Right. Um, minus maybe a couple of hiccups in, in public but, for yeah, me. Yeah, those kissing moments. Okay, but but I think find someone that, that you want that with because if it's if you don't want it, you have to almost ask yourself why. Right. Because that is something that is just so such a human um, like need. It's, it's a sensory it's, thing. It's almost all animals too. I yeah. mean, you know, you, you look at even like a kangaroo. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, that, that mom the carries around that baby around in that sack. You know, yeah, there's, there's a comfort know, example the, the, for the sure. The kittens, they'll cuddle up to their mom cat, yeah. you know. And I mean, I, I, I other than just a few animals, most of them, you know, that, that, that touch or is so important. The thing that really bothers me too is like when I hear about couples that like don't sleep in the same room. Right. Because like one snores or something, like you're depriving the gift of touch right. and that love because I feel like that's very hard unless you're intentional I guess throughout the day but most people will have different schedules like <clears throat> night without being weird like nighttime is a time where the yeah, touch, huge. But, yeah the well, touch comes us. up so I feel like you know the like having that desire but also making sure throughout any season in your life that like you're you're protecting that and you're desiring yeah. that. It's you know, really important. And guys, if your woman snores, Which you're just going to have to so live with it, you know, and just I get in there I don't. and I pretend like you don't hear don't. all that. Yeah. Okay, well, she it's doesn't snore, but I do have uh, my, my brother. Oh, my gosh, he is the worst snore in the world. Yeah. I mean, he, he you can't sleep in the same room with him. Like, we got a, I got a hotel room with him, and he was just snoring. And I'm, I get up the next morning, I haven't got much sleep. And I was funny because I, I would just occasionally just like, push him really hard and then lay back down and try to get like back to sleep before he goes back. And the next day he's like, he's like, Oh, that was good night. I slept well. And I'm just like, how does your wife sleep with you? Like, how does this even happen? So, you know, uh, good news for them. She pushes and perseveres through. But on the flip side, we were mm -hmm. just talking with another couple and mm -hmm. they do not sleep in the same room because mm -hmm. she snores really loud. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it sounds like Darth Vader in there. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's funny, but at the same time, it prevents I, touch. Well, there, there's two differences in the relationships, yeah. you know, I mean, I, the, my brother's relationship with his wife is really good. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a very wonderful, and on the flip side, this other one, it's not as, uh, not as demonstrated as loved, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, it does that have a correlation to the fact that they don't cuddle and they don't sleep in the same room? I'm going to say yes. I mean, I do, I, not I do think like, okay, the nights that I'm mad and I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's really mean i'm like read the room and like don't touch me i do wake up feeling she, yeah. different than i can tell halfway loved. through the night she, I, she'll, I'll, like, she'll start, start reaching and she'll be like wait that's right i'm mad <laughs> she'll put a pillow in between us just to make sure that she doesn't <laughs> forget in the sure. morning um but you know if i try to if i try to sleep in a different room or i go on the couch and i'm watching a movie and i fall asleep and, mm -hmm. and she wakes up and i'm not there oh Oh, she's so upset. She's like, yeah. what? And why so are you, is, why is, are you not in here with me? Yeah, so it is. I guess the point is, it is a form of love. And yes. it is important. Is that people. one of your C's? Is uh, sleeping no. is spelled wrong or no. something? No, no, <laughs> Okay, but I do have some things that I think are worth addressing. Okay. Um, and that is, what if for a period of time you live far away from your partner? Mm. One person is going, uh, I know someone who they went back to school and had to do a certain... Um, a study where they were separated from their spouse for six months or in the army. Um, what if your partner um, is wanting to have sex and you're far away? Like, how do you fulfill that with touch? What um, What if you're not a touchy person? Um, what if the sexual intimacy for you is uh, mentally challenging? Like, what do you do with all these scenarios where touch can't be demonstrated? In, like, it's not an instant thing because we're in the same room physically together. Yeah, so, How do you still protect that? So what I would do, um, as far as like if I had to move away for six months for some kind of work and you couldn't right. be there, right. um, I'd probably get one of those pillows that's in the shape of me. Okay, and then uh, I would uh, I would collect all my nails, my clip off my nails, <laughs> and I'd reconstruct question, my like, hands. Really you know, have you ever seen where you put glue on your hand and you can peel it off? I would just Ew. I would I would wrap this whole thing. And then in... next thing you know, there's a documentary like on the next Dahmer or something. Because I'm like, her friends show up and they're like, Hey, 
has some what is going on in there? And it's just this paper mache song oh, playing. About, okay, that's a terrible idea. Okay, yeah, I understand these questions are hard because I don't want to get into life. You know, life. That, that is a great question. You know, FaceTime. I, I, I think what you have to weird. do is you have to accept the fact that physical touch isn't there at that moment. Yeah, okay? yeah. Um, and then if you can, uh, you know, fly him in or you guys can meet up, then you mm -hmm. guys can, you know, but just make sure, you know, I think anything... Anything is fine as long as there's great communication. Yeah, okay? true. Um, and you're filling all those other categories immensely higher. You know, yeah, so if true. I can't be there for her to physically touch her, you yeah. know, and, and hold her, that means that I got to spend even more time with her. And because of her other label, which is gifts, I got to make sure I'm providing that level of gifts to her. So right. then at least if this, it's kind of like, if you look at your vehicle, we mm -hmm. all have a car, we fill it up with, you know, gas, right? Right, right. But motorcycles, okay, actually mm -hmm. have two tanks, okay? You mm -hmm. have your gas tank and you have a reserve tank. So okay. So in yeah, so in regards to mm -hmm. what I would see is that is it's just vitally important. You're filling up that reserve tank to the top. Yeah. And, and every sense. moment you can to get them through the lull of not being able to do the physical touch part. Right. You know? But don't yeah. be surprised when I you like get that. back and that physical touch part is not as primary. Or I, I or heightened. Or heightened. She's like <laughs> <laughs> Give me no, okay, arms. so yeah, that's actually a really good place to go is like pursue the secondary. Yeah. But if like the secondary is time, yeah. I guess you arrange a lot of like oh, phone just, calls. I'm just gonna have to strap a GoPro to my <laughs> chest and walk around 24/7 no, so she can. Okay, I, I, I feel do, like I'm there. I do think because everybody has more than one, then in those seasons you yeah. focus more on something else. Yeah. Um, because it could be different, especially for women. Like it, I think it goes through different like yeah, seasons. It does. Like if you have a baby right. or something. Right, women, like, women that have a baby, you know, they don't physical want to be touch. Like touched, you know, yeah. they, they already got all the touching. You know, everybody's been rubbing their belly for the last nine months. And they have you know, a baby. They now. got a baby that's all over their boobs the whole time. I don't you know, know any of this they, from personal yeah, experience. Yeah, they they, they but... feel they don't feel as pretty, you know, because their body's all weird and whacked out, and they got you know they got. <laughs> can you they even got, say this? Yeah, like, I, is this I offensive to anyone? Oh, I'm offending everyone. Women. No, it's, you know, things happen. And yeah. so it, it, there is moments where, you know, somebody's, maybe their their sexual desire goes it's, away. It's, it's you different, know? yeah. And, and there's certain chemicals. But you can't use that excuse forever either, though. No, no, no. That's the thing is, like, I've heard also women are like, oh, I just, I could go a year now and just... You know, I'm so drained from kids and different things. Yeah. I don't have any desire. And, and I would say that's and, like and really that is, that is the level of too. the hormones and how the body and, works. And I get that. But I think because you're with somebody else right. who has sexual needs, like, that you got to figure that out. You that's not do like an, something to fix that. That's problem. that's not an excuse. Look, my eyebrows are way up high. <laughs> um, but but on that is there's there's also times where people are struggling with depression and mm. the medicines and things that they're given, or even like they're dealing with cancer or something else, yeah. and the medicines literally Se take like that whole desire away. away. Yeah, uh, you know, and that's that's where someone on the opposite side needs to understand the circumstances. Yeah. You know, and we got to be compassionate. Maybe she's not wanting to hold my hand right now because she broke it or mm -hmm. something. Don't be upset that she's not holding my hand understand that there's a reason why she's not holding my hand yeah and you know and if you really truly love this other person whether it's a buddy that mm -hmm. you love or mm -hmm. a work partner which you can't touch mm -hmm. or your partner right. um you just uh, be smart and don't be selfish mm -hmm. you know uh, do i get really mad at her when she doesn't give me a kiss no no, no of course i don't not. get mad we make jokes but, about it but, but i do behind I, the scenes yeah she she I does just, give me enough it's affection. literally it's like was really drilled you know i went to every church event and youth thing and it was just so drilled to be like holy and all these mm -hmm. things that it was you know it was hard it's hard to go from like you're not supposed to do anything until you are with your husband someday to like being playful like yeah. for me it was it was a little challenging yeah. um thankfully i have really good chemistry with yeah. you so that yes. really helps well good i like that um well most importantly uh know your love languages yes okay. and i want to say one more thing too oh we got more thank you <laughs> <laughs> I like to talk. This is probably no, where I get in trouble. This is the part of the no, show. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm, in I, I'm actually supporting something I see on your little page here. Okay. Is that like none of this is rocket science in the sense that like you probably could tell you from like your spouse when you could rate them without even talking to them. Like you're gonna know if you're with somebody who's super like into touch all the time, have right. to be touching like one to ten. Oh my gosh, they're like an eight. Or like gifts, oh they don't really care. A three. Like the more you're with someone, I think the more you can kind of know. But the thing about communication that I think is so huge is you might be wrong. Like there might be things you think that actually come from a different place. Like mm -hmm. with gifts, like gifts isn't high for you. 
but I would maybe try to do something and it would be counterproductive, like a gift card, you know, or something. So even if you think you kind of understand this about your partner, like it's really great to discuss because yeah. I feel like you really learn a lot more by just opening up a conversation to yeah. like, how do you enjoy touch? Is it a comfort thing for yeah. you or is it a sexual thing for you? Like, right. Or maybe, you know, is there a place in your body that you're ticklish and you don't want me to touch? Yeah. Which I can't I, find hers. I know she's ticklish no, I, somewhere. I don't think I and am. And she'll never tell me. She's I like, oh, I'm ticklish. I'm like, I'm going to find it. Uh, know, I never get like... I put on my, my gear, my light, and I'm just... Nothing. No. I can't figure out the ticklish no, spot. No, no, like massages or like pedicures. Like I never get like... You no. know, nothing. So I don't know. There's some something wrong. I'll find it one day. Okay, so <laughs> it, it, one last piece I would say that kind of goes along with one this. Last, last one last, 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 last piece. piece. The P.S. part. Um, <laughs> you know, if, if you're early in a relationship, okay, the yeah. whole reason we put this this podcast together is because you know we are we are going to get married very soon. We thought it would be very right. important to show the journey of what we know now, and okay. then later down the road we can look back at this and and adjust. And revisit yeah. everything. And she can probably yeah. use it against me. <laughs> no, no, um, but. But, you know, if you're early in the relationship, mm -hmm. okay, and your love language is touch and theirs is not, mm -hmm. okay, um, maybe that's not the right relationship hmm. if, if that is something that they don't, and it doesn't mean that they're a bad person or no. you're a bad person. It, it simply means that's something wise, you know, you could tell your children is make sure you've got as many similar Compatible love languages. as much you, as possible. Know, because if they're not, and, and they, let's just say that theirs is all time and they love gifts and okay. yours is... Uh, words of affirmation and touch and they don't want to help you and learn your language and you don't want to learn their language well maybe it's just smart for the two of you guys to find somebody else mm -hmm. because the, there's somebody out there that doesn't like to be touched and loves to spend tons of time and so use that wisdom that this this <laughs> this love language really is is that is <clears throat> making sure that you're compatible making sure that you're learning how to fill the love tank right. and if you're incapable of filling someone else's love tank you're not gonna make them feel loved and it's most important in a relationship for you to make the other person know their love. And if you're already married to someone and you're like, well, crap, like we do, uh, we're opposite on all of these. What do we do? I think the advice I would give is um, love is never selfish. Right. So if you are in a situation where you are working with someone who's very opposite, recognize the fact that for you to love them, you're going to have to be selfless. Yeah. But if you're not married yet, I definitely think it makes it this a lot is something easier. You need to talk about. Yeah, like we both words of affirmation number one all the time right. for both of us. So I mean, it's really fun and easy for us to just affirm each other. It does. And, and so, if you I mean, are married to someone where your love language is don't, okay, it, it's like she said, yeah. you got to sacrifice, you got to be do. less selfish. But m maybe it means just sitting down, quite frankly, and talking with another person. Yeah. You know, getting yeah. a mentor or a counselor to kind of help you guys understand how you can fill each other's love tanks. And, yeah. and again, we're not talking sex we're we're talking physical touch and there's things that someone can do that shouldn't make them feel completely uneasy yeah and but i do think sex is part of it yeah. like i've come to believe like touch sex yeah. is totally part of it yeah it, so with Sorry. that we'll leave you guys at that um <laughs> Pay attention to the other ones, um, you know, learn all your languages, take the test, communicate yeah. with your partner, and, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time. Until, until. until.